A lot of you have been asking, what are the best laptops out there for people creating art? Which ones have a good pen? Which ones have a good touchscreen? What specs should I be looking for? Well, today I'm going to be counting down my top five favorite laptops for digital creators. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and today I'm taking a look at the best Windows laptops for artists. I've had the chance to review a good number of Windows 2-in-1 laptops slash tablets over the last few years, and some have been good, and some have been terrible, and these are the good ones. So first off, I do want to say that everything I'm going to be looking at today is pen-enabled. That means that these are devices that have styluses, touch screens, so you don't need a drawing tablet to attach to the side of these. That also means that there's not going to be any Apple products on this list. I'm sorry. Even though I am a huge fan of the brand new MacBook, Apple seems content on just keeping that kind of functionality in the iPad. Because everything on this list has a touchscreen and stylus, these are going to be a little bit more expensive than your average laptops. More features means more cost. You can get a normal laptop and plug a drawing tablet into it, but then you're gonna wind up spending another three or $400 anyway. If you are interested in that sort of thing, I have reviews of Hui on XP Pen Wacom, all that stuff over on my website and on this channel. So if you do go that route, check out those reviews. Also, as a side note, the links on my website and the links in the description down below for the products I'm gonna be talking about today are affiliate links. It's how I make money and how I can afford to buy more gear to review. So with that out of the way, Let's get onto this list. Number five, we are taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. Now this is last year's model, but I was still able to find them on Amazon and around the web at a pretty good price. This was one of my favorite Windows 2-in-1s of 2020. You can get this as a 13-inch model or a 15-inch model. Most of them have faster Core i7 processors instead of the i5 processors you see in a lot of entry-level laptops. So even though you're getting an older computer, you're getting more power out of the gate with that computer. This is also one of Samsung's QLED panels, and Samsung makes really good displays. This is no exception. There is a catch to this. This isn't a 4K display. This is a full HD display. That's 1920 by 1080 pixels. So it's not a super pixel dense display like you might be used to on your phone or your tablet or some of the other computers I'm gonna talk about later on this list. And when you're drawing on something like this, you are really close to the screen. You are hovering over it you are gonna see those pixels, but it's still a really good looking screen. Now this display rotates 360 degrees into tablet mode, and there's even an S Pen tucked away in the side. I really like drawing with the S Pen. This uses Wacom's text, so you get a really clean, smooth line when you're drawing, and also really great pressure sensitivity. One downside to the pen is that it's tiny. It's not fun to hold for extended periods of time. This was designed to be originally stuck inside some of the phones that Samsung makes, and they started putting these in their tablets or their laptops as well. The good news here is that any S Pen can be used with this laptop, which means you can go out and get something for 20 or 30 bucks that's far more comfortable to hold for an extended period of time, and it's gonna work just as well as the stylus that's tucked into the side. Now, this is a really light laptop, so holding it while you're sitting on the couch to draw is totally an option. It's not clunky at all, and the battery life is pretty solid. Now, Samsung makes several versions of their Flex laptops from a year ago, so make sure you get the blue one because one, the blue just looks really cool, but also the gray one doesn't have a stylus, it's not pen compatible, and the red one is a Chromebook, and Chromebooks just aren't nearly as much fun to draw on. Number four, we're looking at the Concept D7 Easel. Now this is a really good computer, and if you're going to be doing 3D work, video editing along with your art and illustration, this might be one of the better options out there. Now the downside of all that is the price. This machine is a beast and it has a price tag to prove it. What makes it unique is the way that the screen can be set up at a whole bunch of different angles, like an easel. You can even pull it all the way down to cover up the keyboard and use like a tablet, a really heavy, bulky, uncomfortable tablet, but a tablet. Now buyer beware, there's two versions of this laptop. One is the Acer Concept D3 easel, and this one that I'm talking about here is the Concept D7 easel. You want the seven, not the three. The three is a good computer, but they're using different styluses. The stylus that comes with the three is just not good. The stylus that comes with the seven 
is very good. It's a shame because the 3 has the same folding screen, it's lower specs, it's far more affordable. I think a lot of people would like it, but that pen kills it. That is the most important thing I'm looking for in these computers, and that pen just doesn't cut it. Now the 7 uses a similar Wacom tech to Samsung's devices, which makes it really fun to draw with. You're gonna get really clean lines, you're gonna get really smooth lines, and overall, it's a really responsive pen. So if you need this kind of power and happen to have that kind of money, this is a good one to look at. Now some of the artwork I make for my reviews I've been putting into frames and posting on social media. I use an app to mock those up and that app is called Canvi and Canvi is sponsoring today's video. Canvi has over 500 room mockups which means you're going to find one or probably more like 50 that helps your art really shine. Canvi is also super easy to use. Let me show you how it works. Step one, you're gonna upload your artwork to the site. Step two, you browse the hundreds of beautiful room mockups Canvi makes available to you. I'm gonna pick this nice blue one. From here, I can add my artwork, I can resize my artwork, I can change the style of frame, the size of the border, I can even add other pieces. I like this wall, but I want it to be even more blue. I can tap the wall and change the color. When everything looks good, I can save it, drop it, or just download it to post on social media. If you use my link down below in the description, you're gonna get the pro plan for free for the first three months. That is a $45 value. Check out the link down in the description and try out Canby today. Number three, we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. Now this is the 2021 version of that Galaxy Book Flex that I mentioned a little bit earlier at number five. Now personally, I do like last year's model a little bit better. I think the design just looks cooler. This looks like every other laptop in the world, but it is a good value for the price and it also comes with an S Pen. And this time it is a full-size S Pen that's more comfortable to hold in your hand for long periods of time. The 360 degree hinge is back and there are two sizes 13 inches or 15 inches the model I have here is the 13 inch it is super crazy light. Now this base model starts with a Core i7 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of storage, which is good enough for any art app, Adobe, Clip Studio, you get the idea. Now, if that's not enough storage for you, you can spring for more, but if you don't mind expandable storage, there's also a micro SD card slot in this laptop as well. Now the drawing experience is what you would expect from any S Pen that you find on any Samsung device. Now, in my review earlier this year, I did mess up a little bit. Actually, I messed up a lot, and I ended up cutting pieces out of that review because initially I had messed up the palm rejection. I guess when there's a Windows update, sometime it resets the palm rejection toggle on. I don't know why that's just not on by default. So I thought the palm rejection was far worse than it actually is. It's not as good as some of the other devices that are later on this list, but it's solid, it's good enough. Number two, we're talking about the Surface Pro 8. Now the Surface Pro line has a huge spot in my heart. I have loved these laptops for a very long time, but there's been something that's really been holding them back for years, and that is just the quality of the pen. Last year, this device would not have made it onto this list. This year, it does. And that is because of the Surface Slim Pen 2. Now in the past, the Surface products have always had really good palm rejection, have had pretty good pressure, but the pen itself was kind of mediocre. It was inconsistent. Sometimes it was okay, other times it was a mess. There was always a lot of wave to the line. Sometimes there was really bad jitter. This new pen fixes all of that. So if you're looking for imperfections in this pen, you can find them, but that's just it. You have to be looking for them. They don't rear their ugly head when you least expect it. To me, this is a dramatic improvement. This is far less wave, and far more importantly, it is consistent. Plus, it hasn't lost any of that great palm rejection in the process. One thing to note, do not get a Surface Pro 7 or older for art. And the reason I am recommending the 8 right now is specifically because of how that pen works with the Surface Pro 8. You can't just run out and grab the new pen and use it on an old device and still get it to work as well. In fact, I did some testing and the pen doesn't work as well on older devices. It gets shakier and it actually gets worse. New pen, new laptop, Great experience, don't mix and match with the old tech. So the Surface form factor has always been something I've really liked. It's super light, it's super portable, it is a real tablet. So if you wanna ditch the keyboard, you could just take it off. Some of the other devices out there it can feel a little weird when you pivot at 360 degrees and the back of your hands are actually holding a keyboard. You get used to it after a while. Well. No, I've never gotten used to it. It feels weird. This is just better for that. Now this is a tablet, so it's not the most specced out performant machine out there, but it's plenty to run Adobe Photoshop or Clip Studio or most any other drawing app out there. It's just 
fine. The one downside is that it does get really hot. When I was testing it, this was something that happened pretty much every single time I used it. There are some little vents along the side, but it doesn't seem to push out that much heat. I didn't have any problems with this overheating, but since your hand is often resting on the device while you're drawing, that's not gonna, a lot of you aren't gonna like it. I think that's just a side effect of Intel's processors in tablets. Number one, we gotta talk about this, the Surface Laptop Studio. I love this laptop, just love it. If you saw my review, you already heard me rave about this thing. I'm always looking for excuses to use it in videos. It's not for everyone, but it's definitely for me. This has a similar hinge and vibe to the Acer Concept D7 easel that I talked about a little bit earlier. That's the one that lets you go from laptop mode to tablet mode, and it's kind of a streamlined cover. I find this aesthetic design, this computer design, just to be more streamlined and up my alley, less gamer, more artist. Unlike the Acer, this only has three positions for the screen though. It's a little bit harder to set at those different positions and they're held in by magnets. Although someone did comment that you could flip the screen entirely around and then tilt it that way if you want to draw on those different angles, something I had never considered. That's that's pretty clever. This also uses the new Slim Pen 2 that the Surface Pro uses, which again is why this is number one on that list because they've improved that pen so much. If this was just a beautiful laptop, that's not really enough to get it on this list. It needs that functionality as well. Now it has it. There are just so many little details here that I love. The haptic feedback on the trackpad, the absolutely silent fans, at least most of the time, 99% of the time. The sleek design, the way the pen charges along the bottom, so good. So much great work done by Microsoft that they've put into this product. I absolutely love it and I have no qualms about putting it number one on my list. Even though it's one of the pricier devices out there, if you need power and a great pen, this is a phenomenal laptop. So that is my list. What do you think? Did I miss anything on my list? Is there anything you'd like me to check out going forward? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.